One of the things that has been missing from a lot of my gaming related videos on Linux is mod support in games. And quite many of you are actually interested or it's even a thing that prevents you from switching over to Linux altogether. So in this video we are going to take a look at the, from what I gathered, most popular modding tools and how you can run them on Linux. Alright, so first off. There is a lot of confusion going on in the modding scene on Linux, seemingly because there are like a million different ways how you can do it. If you bought your games on Steam and use Steam Play, aka Proton to run them, then many tutorials suggest you use Proton tricks to install mod launchers straight into the game's wine prefix. A prefix is essentially nothing else than a simulated Windows environment. You know, the typical C drive, some dependencies and whatnot. And generally speaking, this is a very good idea, since you don't need to fiddle around with Steam dependencies, get access to your save files and so on. But I personally find using Proton tricks not elegant enough, since you need to make the launcher executable in some way, which means that you need to add it as a non-Steam game and sometimes it's also not as well integrated as it might seem at first. Instead, I'm going to use the application that I also use to install games outside of Steam and Windows applications, which fun fact are actually none, and it's a program called Bottles. Right, so if you've installed the Flatpak version, then what you should check first is if it is even allowed to access your Steam games. In my case, I like to install games on dedicated disks, which I have mounted in the slash mnt directory. Just add the path with a tool like Flatseal, or if you're using a desktop environment like KDE Plasma in the settings, and maybe even also allow it to access your home directory, which can be quite useful in some instances. You could theoretically skip all of these permissions and straight up allow everything, but I wouldn't really recommend it. And if you didn't install the Flatback edition, then it has access to everything anyway. Let's open up bottles and make sure that you enable the Steam Proton prefixes integration in the preferences. This allows bottles to access your Proton prefixes or again environments of your Windows games. And as you can see here, we have access to Skyrim. Now here are a couple of things that you should verify before we go any further. For some obscure reason, Valve didn't rename the latest release Proton 9 yet, and the directory is still called beta with parentheses, and Wine doesn't like that. So before you install any programs, I recommend you to either switch to an older stable release or Proton Experimental. If you have switched Proton versions or even just installed the game, it's also a good idea to at least start it once, so that all of the dependencies are in place. Now back in bottles. I initially tried to install mods with the mod organizer too, and initial impressions were pretty good. The installation went straight through, it detected some moddable games, however the mods that I chose in particular, which I actually picked at random, had some version mismatches and Skyrim crashed instantly. But as it turns out I made a huge mistake. I apparently had a lot of workshop stuff installed, which was actually the culprit of the crashes. So just so you know. Otherwise the mod organizer 2 works just fine, but I just did figure it out until after I went with Vertex instead. Now again the installation was very easy. Run the setup executable, make your way through the installer and if Vertex doesn't get added automatically to the list here, you can add it manually by first looking up the path with browse files and adding it via bottles in build functionality. Afterwards you could also add it to Steam, your start menu, desktop or bottles library. Now Vertex prompted me with some stuff, mainly because I have several game drives, but you can pretty easily fix those. Afterwards I went ahead and installed some mods, like I did with the mod organizer before, except it worked way more effortless and updates were pulled immediately. Now getting the mods to actually run was interesting and I can't really explain why. For some reason I can't launch the game from Vortex, as it just crashes. It also didn't make a difference if I had any mods loaded or not. Another thing that I kind of overlooked was that I also needed to enable some of them in the plugin section below. I'm not entirely sure why and it might be related to an API change from Pefesta, whereas mods are now loaded differently, but that could also be just wrong. So you need to enable the mods in the mods menu and check if they are activated in the plugins menu afterwards. 
For me personally, another challenge was the difference between the old classic edition that I have and the newer special edition, which in terms of mod compatibility can easily be overlooked, especially when you try to look up popular mods. Now what I didn't find to be an issue with the mods that I personally installed was Linux's case sensitivity. This might be due to Wine being able to handle it properly and me essentially doing everything through it, but if you run into any issues, then there are a lot of tutorials online how you can get this working as well. Again, I'm no modder and I think that all of the problems might just be related to me handling the tools rather than Linux being incompatible with them. The only game I sorta install mods for is Minecraft. And okay, let's cover it as well. Many standalone Minecraft mods or mod loaders come via some Java package, which is essentially nothing else than an installer. The thing is that most distros that I know of don't actually come with Java pre-installed. Now instead of making this incredibly difficult, what you gotta do is to just download Java via your package manager. You can check if it is available in the software store, but since it's more of a dependency rather than a desktop program, you're usually just gonna find it via the terminal. Make sure that you don't download the headless version though, as it cannot display the installer. Now, one thing to consider. If you've installed Minecraft on a Debian based system, then you might have used Microsoft's official version. This was beneficial, since mod installers usually assume that there is a .minecraft directory in your home. Now on Fedora, I personally downloaded the flatback version, which is not officially maintained by Microsoft, but essentially still the same thing. Now I need to select a different directory in this path, since with Flatpak everything is sandboxed. But then again, sometimes even if the installer lets you choose a path, they mess up some stuff and you need to manually copy some files over. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Now if you don't want to go through that altogether, then there are a couple of third party launchers out there, which are much more powerful and far better suited for the Steam Deck as well, as they actually remember your credentials due to some API mismatches. Basically a mixture of Valve not implementing everything, to the flatback version not being compatible by default, just some weird things. Alright, so hopefully I'm going to find a couple more mods for the b-roll of this video. If I discovered something that didn't work, then I would have already informed you by now. But otherwise, it's modding. And it's not the easiest thing to do, no matter on what operating system you are on. It's definitely not something for me at the moment, but it was still interesting that essentially both the Mod Organizer 2 and Vortex would work. And at least the packages that I tried were compatible with the games as well. If you are a more advanced modder and actually know some mods by name, then you might run into some other issues than me. However, I'm leaving a couple of links in the video description below that might be useful to you. If you've still liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be a part of this Linux journey. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.